Hello and welcome to the introductory episode of Finger Guns Interviews with Tony, Dave, and James. I am your co-host, Dave Baldwin, and here I am with... Tony B. And... Jimmy. And this is a very special first time episode are we gonna call it it's we're, we're still it's a work in yeah, progress yeah, right work now. in progress work guys. in progress but uh i've done some interviews all outside of um finger guns yep and never for myself so i'm very very excited that i was able to share the first interview i've done and figure and put together myself yeah with yeah. the two of you yeah so i'm proud of that and it is with tara thorne and leslie smith of Compulsus, which premiered at Inside Out at the beginning yep. of June and is premiering at Fantasia on August 2nd. Yeah, so it was uh, it was my very first interview. I think, Tony, it was my first interview as well. Yours as well, yeah. yeah. Um, so we got the chance to, to talk with them last week uh, about their film, and uh, here it is in all of its glory. The very first Finger Guns interviews for Compulsus. Enjoy, everybody. So, hi, guys. Our, Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi. Uh, thanks People for... All, uh, everyone says guys. It's okay. fine. All right. Sorry. I'm still working on that. Thanks for having <laughs> us today. Uh, thanks for thanks being for, interested. Yeah. Yeah. We all saw the film. We all really enjoyed it. And we know that there's an irony in talking to three straight white guys about uh, about this film. But, you know... <laughs> James. <laughs> yeah. I I mean, honestly, that's kind of where I wanted to start off. I just, I absolutely loved sort of the vigilante aspect to the entire thing. Um, I'm pretty sure I like almost cheered when, uh, when Wally went and like brained the first guy. Amazing. Like, yes. Like this is just great. Um, <laughs> but I kind of wanted to ask uh, sort of about the stylistic choice to use only the one actor to play all of the men and keep them like nameless with the, the bleeped up names and really wearing the same clothes and everything. Yeah, that was um, that was the very first thing I wrote down in the script. Um, there's like a little italic note at the top that says no men's names will be said, heard and no faces will be seen. Um, it, it was sort of a riff on the idea of how many faceless, nameless um, female victims we've seen in film and television. And they, they're just sort of a body and they don't matter. They're not characters. So I was like, let's just do that this way. And and also the point of the movie is not the violence. Like the point is not to show bloody faces and and the damage that Wally's done it's just like it's the fact that she's doing it at all so um so you know keep, keeping it to one actor and the 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 costume thing I think we decided in the moment we were sort of like should he wear all the same thing will people be confused no and Jimmy did this amazing job of you know he plays seven guys I think and they all speak a little bit differently and they all vibe a little bit differently and um and and really he doesn't have a ton to work with and that's deliberate as well. Like they're not well-written and it's on purpose. Um, and uh, yeah, so he, he, I think he did an, an incredible job of making you believe this is just a type of guy as opposed to a guy. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I thought it, I thought it was a cool choice as well. Um, I was just wondering why a lesbian protagonist as opposed uh, to as opposed just because she specifically says like she hasn't like faced the same kind of abuse yeah. as the other women have yeah i think it was sort of a bit of um another angle of subversion for me just to be like you know there's so many there's so many films where women take revenge because they've been raped or like their kid has been killed or something fucking horrible has happened to them and i was like not only has nothing fucking horrible happened to her she it wouldn't um you know like it's not going to happen in her dating life so i just thought it was like extra kind of um cheeky to be like yeah she actually doesn't have any personal interest in this it's just some, it's just like a an empathy like an empathy vibration that she's following and how did you feel playing the character, Leslie? Oh, God, Wally's the best. <laughs> like, truly, like, I remember just the audition was one thing. Like, I, I think there were two or three scenes that were all very different. Um, the writing was fantastic. But then after booking the role and Tara sent me the script, just getting to like reading through it and going, she does that. And then she does that. And then she does that. Um, yeah, it was such a gift to play Wally. I loved we, every second of it. We asked so much of her. There was one day at all where the producer was like, 
This is a scene where someone pushes a button on a photocopier. Let's give Leslie the morning off. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the AD and her finger comes in and it's like, Broop. it's really quick. So in case you wanted to compare, you would be, you wouldn't be able to catch us. I know that's not my hand. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to be the only thing we see every time we watch. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Boom, movies are fake. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I have a question for Tara. Yeah. Uh, what in what inspired you to make uh, to make a film like this? Uh, how much how much of what happens in the story is uh, a lived in experience for you? Um, Thelma and Louise is, of course, like my touchstone film. It changed my life when I was twelve, and uh, you know it's it's thirty years old now, and I kind of can't believe it. And and it was also supposed to change the landscape of film, and did it? Um, mm-hmm. It did not. It did not make things better for women as actors or writers or directors. Um, but you know, that film of course has a tragic ending. Um, but I always love this idea of, of women kind of just taking the power, just like systematically being, you know, faced with all of the things they've always been faced with, but, but finally going, no, no more. Um, so, you know, I was interested in that. And, um, in terms of lived experience, I, I was just getting very, 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 very angry. And, Going back to um, I, the, the moment I always cite is when Seth MacFarlane hosted the Oscars and he sang a song called We Saw Your Boobs. And it was all about all the women who had done topless scenes. And many of them were, you know, Oscar winners, Oscar nominees. And, and some of them, um, they cut to them in the audience and they were gamely smiling. And I was like, fuck this, fuck you. And then after that, there was, you know, Me Too with Harvey Weinstein, like that, all that stuff. And then Gian yeah. you know, Gian Gameshi was like one that really hit close to home for me. I, I worked with him on Q a little bit. And so I knew some of the people that were involved in the case. And it also just felt like, like the Canadian version of Me Too, where it's like every woman I knew was talking about it. We were, it was like the, the dawn of live tweeting trials. And, and, and I found out how many women I knew close personal friends, family were survivors. And I was naively thinking that I, that we'd all gotten lucky and it just wasn't true. So, you know, I was just really angry and thought, you know, if women were as violent as men, there would be no men because there are so many women just walking around with this trauma, like it never happened to them. And I thought, well, what if we flip the script on that and just, just gave it back? Oh, that's, that's incredible. Well, you did a great job. It's a very, it's, it's a very ang- angry film. <laughs> like you can, you can tell that you're passionate about the story and uh, it, it, it shows. Cool. What's the response been to the film so far? It's been mixed. Thanks for your, uh, your review, by the way. That's one of our favorites. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you. I, <laughs> I, I, I liked it. So I'm glad you guys read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We read it walking into in, the inside out screening. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, we've only had the one audience in person. So that's sort of like the critical response has been kind of uh, over the map, depending on, you know, where the person is and what their experience is. But which is fine. I, I was a film critic, too, for a really long time. I don't I don't take it personally. But um, but the audience in Toronto. Toronto was really uh, supportive and uh, there were a lot of our friends there, which was really nice. And we all kind of got to watch it together f- for the first time since the, the, the screener. Um, so it's, it's been good. I am very curious about the Fantasia audience because I really, I don't, I think as a genre film, we're disappointing. So I don't, I don't want people to come in thinking it's going to be gross and bloody when it's just not. Mm-hmm. It's still pretty. Uh, it's still a pretty visceral film. Like you still, yeah. Yeah. like Tony said, it's it's angry, and you have the passion in it. So I, I hope that the audience responds to it well, and you know, hopefully, there's a a lot of shitty men that are looking side to side, like <laughs> mm, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other one that I was thinking about was the um, the lead, the relationship between Wally and. Her name is escaping me. Lou. 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 Um, and how it kind of progresses. And then it's a little toxic near the end. Yeah. And they're kind of like, have said that. I don't they're like kind it. of egging each other on. Type yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah. You don't like that people say that? <laughs> that it's toxic? No. I mean, Wally's gone down a certain path of which I don't know that there's a way back from, which I think if you were in a romantic relationship with someone, that would become very difficult. <laughs> Yeah, right? I, yeah, <laughs> dead, just dead silence all the way across. It's funny because I, I did because uh, uh, Lou was originally a cop, and when I when I changed her job, I said to someone, you know, is it is it just as is it as it, it does it have as much impact if she's not a cop? And someone said, 
if I found out my new girlfriend was a vigilante, like that would be a problem. It doesn't matter what my job is. I'm like, yes, you make a point. You make a point. But I think Lou, Lou plays interestingly to like, to like straight women. They're like, I don't get her motivation. And I'm like, I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> she knows her motivation. <laughs> and what but yeah, would- I, I think Lou is sort of never all the way in, you know, I don't want to spoil the movie, but it's like, she, she like in, she wants, she wants to accept it's and again. It's like, it's different than like, Oh, she smokes. I'll get around it. Like it's, it's different. <laughs> so she, she tries, but you know, it's not quite, uh, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> oh. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> what was it like developing the character, like your relationship with, um, with Lou? I don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, I don't, I didn't write down on her name. Well, that's okay, that's, uh, Kat, yeah. Kathleen Dorian, who yeah, you two I just are saw great last together. week. You guys Thank are great you. together. Yeah, it was, um, it's interesting because, because Katie and I have a lot of mutual friends and have kind of been in similar circles, but we didn't know each other very well. And then when it came down to callbacks together, we had to do them on zoom because it was, you know, early 2021. That's when that's when things happened. Um, yeah, yeah, shit that's was getting real then. <laughs> yeah. So we were we we did it over Zoom, but it just felt so clear that um, we were able to play really well together. At least that's how I felt. I feel like Tara agreed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I I when we called, we didn't call many people back for Lou. I wasn't feeling most people, and uh, and we we just put them with Leslie because it, I was like how they are on their own is whatever. I mean, it's obviously important, but like the relationship is the most important. And if they can make me believe it over zoom, then how is like real life is going to be amazing. And yes, that's what happened. And that was true. Yeah. And it was really nice to see them work together and, and just be really generous and kind with each other. And, and, you know, I have a friend who did background and she's like, and, and all, they were all, my friends were talking about their, their time on the set. And, and my friend Allison was like, well, it, I had this story and it was literally about like, Katie and Leslie being nice to each other. It's <laughs> <laughs> like giving each other space. And like, I was like, yeah, that sounds right to me. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was wonderful, especially Tara was really gracious to, to give Katie and I a little bit of leeway in terms of improv um, around the script, um, which I will always say is a testament to the strength of the script because the characters were so clear on the page that it was so easy for us to lift them off and then keep playing a little bit longer at the ends of scenes. And um, it was, it was a real joy to work with Katie. All my favorite scenes are scenes that they improv and you usually can't hear the dialogue, but they're all my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> they're just for me. <laughs> yeah, we're just getting really snarky with each other going, no, 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 I love it. <laughs> I like that for sure. Do you guys, I, I feel like I'm interrupting and not talking, letting you guys ask questions, so... No, I don't have anything. I got anything else on my end, James. Yeah, it was it was just going to be a comment that like I I did all, all of my sort of favorite scenes beyond you know knowing the off screen violence that was happening, which was always fun to imagine. Um, <laughs> were, were between Wally and Lou, like it was like it just it came through so well, uh, just their characters. So it was it was just a, a testament to you, Leslie, and 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 to you, Tara as well for writing a really good pro, good parts. Well, I appreciate you saying that because no one asked us about the relationship. And I'm just like, hello, <laughs> it's a 50% yeah. gay love story. It, it's the it's so important to the film. It doesn't like yeah. the film wouldn't work without it. I yeah, think so. I th- yeah. If you don't have anything to lose, then what's who cares? So, exactly. yeah, cares? yeah, exactly. So if they're not responding to it, then clearly something like there's something wrong with them, not you guys. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. They're, they're That's right. They're missing something. They're and, wrong. And the um, the relationship with the sister, yeah, and mm. how it's kind of put off until the end, where you're kind of, as you're going along, there's like that tension where you're like mm. something's not right, something's going on. Like, how did you work that into the script, or like was that? But I don't want to keep saying lived in, but it felt very. Like there was a tension there, suspense. It's the oldest idea of the script. Like I had this idea for a short film and I don't want to blow our ending, but I had this idea where a woman shows up to another woman's house, beat to shit, and the other woman takes revenge 
in some capacity. So that's the idea I had, but I'm like, but how did we get here? I don't know. So you can't just, you can't just do it. So, so, you know, the filtering in, you know, the, I think the trick of the movie is, is the, the relationship with, with Dev played by Hillary Adams and, and, you know, she, she's just sort of checking in occasionally and you're like, okay, what are these kind of generic phone calls about? And then not till the moment that they matter, does it all snap together if we've done our job properly. Um, and, you know, th- that scene, and I, I feel like I'm just talking around it because it's a spoiler, but that, that scene we shot very early in the movie and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing yet. And I was so scared of it. Um, but it was like one of the best, m- one of my best experiences direct directing on the film for sure. Hillary Adams was fantastic. Is fantastic. Yeah. She's she's still with fantastic. us. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, she's still with us, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and she was actually the only person I had never met before. You know, I've been an arts journalist in Halifax for 20 years. So I knew everyone from some capacity, but Hillary was a new person to me. And we met that morning. We brought her in early to kind of to be on set to, to read her side of the phone calls and stuff. And um, and we asked her to pull like amazing shit out of nowhere at 10 at 10 at night at the end of a really long day uh in the middle of a snowstorm it was very cold in the house it was very cold outside and um you know everyone you both you both just came together in an amazing way yeah it's i think it's a great film and i know they i know james and tony agree and i thought i it's really powerful. And I just rewatched the ending just now because i wanted to see that the the monologue or the yeah, the montage. monologue. The montage. Oh, monologue. monologue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Between the everybody. The montage Yes. Yeah, the montage There's a good word for it. <laughs> and it's just like, it's a hell of a way to like end the movie. And it kind of, it does bring together the big message. And, you know, like we all know men are, men are shitty. And like, there's <laughs> That's no. That's good there's that no, you know. There's yeah, no getting, there's no getting around that. We're, we're just trying our best to do better. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was it was it was a uh, I know Dave you got to see it earlier for for Inside Out Fest but um for me it was the first film I watched at Fantasia and it just it kicked off oh, the whole wow. festival with a bang so cool thank you for that. thank you thank you yeah yes thank you thank you so much for the film it was it was a shotgun blast to the face for sure uh, uh was not what was not what i was expecting at all uh it was great loved how you didn't you chose not to um focus on the violence and you were just focusing on her and her mission it, it was really really well done and i wish you all the best with it Joe, thank you so much Yes, Thank congratulations you. on the film. And yeah, fingers crossed for a great audience response of Fantasia. Fingers crossed, Thank finger you. guns. Finger guns. <laughs> finger guns. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thank take you so care. much, guys. You. Yes, you guys take care. Me too. <laughs>